How's it going? Before I do this video, this will be a member's first video and then I'll put it to the rest of the masses. I'm not going to monetize this video though. Um, I want to talk about uh, carrying tools, tools um, as a truck driver. You know, for the longest time, I believed that uh, carrying in a commercial vehicle was illegal. And maybe at one time it was. But what's interesting is I was, I came across a Facebook thread one day. Um, it's a group called Old Truckers or something like that. You know, it's a bunch of old school guys reminiscing about the good old days. They share pictures of, of their old cab overs. You know, it's, it's a pretty neat page. And uh, um, my good buddy Les, he's always posted on there, you know. But anyways, um, somebody asked the question, how many of you old guys, you know, used to carry with you on the truck? And tell, tell us about situations. Did you ever have to use it? You know, things like that. And of course, you got all the Hunts Point stories and all the Chicago stories and all the, I was at a traffic light and there was this, that, and the other. And, and you realize that there's a lot of truck drivers that are carrying and you don't realize it, right? And so, once I learned from a DOT officer that it's not illegal to have in the in a commercial vehicle, then I started to look into it. And I've never been a gun guy. I've never been, like, for example, whenever a couple of friends of mine, we'd be on the phone, we would talk about, they would talk about guns. I would be like, I couldn't tell you the difference between a 22 and a 45. I mean, I, I just had no idea what they were talking about. They, they, they were speaking, you know, some weird language to me that I didn't understand. You know, kind of like if I was speaking guitar stuff to them or trucking stuff to somebody that, you know, doesn't know our world, right? But I made it a point when I started to see the decline of, of certain areas and I started to see more drivers getting you know, robbed or attacked, you know, and all that. And I made it a point. It's like, you know what? I, I kind of want to dive into this a little bit. And so what I did was I started to do research. I started to watch YouTube videos and started to learn the differences. And so about 2018, I made the decision that I was going to get my concealed carry, even though Missouri is a constitutional carry state. In other words, I don't need a permit to carry um, here in the state of Missouri. However, in order to carry in other states, I wanted to have that permit. Um, you're more likely to win in a court, you know, if you've got your carry permit. Because carry permit usually promotes the fact that you're responsible, right? So, and, and that's what you want. You want responsible people to handle these kind of things. And so, uh, Christmas of 2018, my wife got me a gift certificate to go get my CCW, and I believe February of 2019 is when I got it. Before all the vid stuff happened, you know. And I uh, dove into that world pretty hardcore. You know, I bought, I bought a couple of tools and got my permit um, and uh, started to educate, you know, and, and a lot of people are like, well, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? You know, and you have to be aware of the laws. So when you're carrying in the truck, you have to be aware of the laws. You know, there was always a debate. What do you do when you go through Illinois? What do you do if you go through Jersey? What if you do go through, what if you go through a state that doesn't um, have reciprocity? I said it right the first time. I think, um, it, in other states, right? And I even got to talk to a big time YouTuber about that, um, Kerry Trainer over on YouTube. He, uh, I emailed him and he said, call me, call this phone number. And he and I talked briefly, you know, he was in a hurry or whatever. And, and he kind of straightened me out on a couple of things when it comes to Illinois and carrying in the vehicle. Now, I'm not going to give you legal advice. I'm not going to tell you whether it's it's good or or not good here on this platform of what you can or can't do in each state because that's up to you. Um, but when you um, 
when you're carrying in the truck, it, it, it's a big responsibility. And you have to follow all the laws of that particular state, you know, and there's a great app called CCW. It's about three bucks, one time fee. And it gives you a map of, you know, what states, how they issue their permits, what permits they do issue, whether you're entitled to tell the officer that's pulled you over, um, whether you're carrying or not, um, what what's legal and what's not legal, um, you know, things of that nature. And so, you know, the states that I'm probably not legal in, I don't drive in because I have that choice. I choose where I go, right? And um, so th that's easy for me to do. But if you're a company driver, you have company policies. But, you know, there's been this this misinformation that you cannot carry in the truck. And that is just not, absolutely not true. And, you know, and, and here's the thing. So let me, let me, uh, let me, um, okay, I had to pause it for a second. So let me give you a history of why I started to carry. Okay, I've lived here in Springfield for 36 years. I've seen a lot of changes. I've lived in big cities where you had to worry about crime, where you had to worry about gangs. I've lived an hour from New York City. I've lived in Phoenix in some of the worst neighborhoods. Um, and I've also grown up in small towns. I've grown up with different mindsets. Um, I have friends on both sides of the of the fence, you know, as you can see, as you can say. Um, and, you know, I get a lot of comments. Well, gee, what are you afraid of, man? What are you afraid of? You know, and, and, and let me give you an example. So those of you who travel this country, you have a unique perspective of this country. And you have to take notice of the fact that there's more... Um, there's more mental illness out here. There's more drug abuse out here. Fentanyl's on the rise. Heroin's on the rise. Meth has always been a problem, especially in my part of the country. And what you what you have to realize is that that especially with meth and fentanyl, people are in the right mindset when they're on that stuff. There's a perfect example that about I don't know about ten or so years ago there was a family that was killed um, what had happened was was this guy had cheated on his girlfriend and got or cheated on his wife and his, his, his mistress his girlfriend got pregnant with him and once she found out she's like you got to do something about that you've got to kill them and so she convinced the guy and one of his friends to go down and to kill this woman and, and she and she said, I will give you an eight ball to do this. And so these two guys, for the price of an eight ball, went and strangled not only her, who was pregnant, but also her four little kids, um, raging, ages ranging from 10 to 2, something like that. Hand strangled these kids. That's what meth does. People aren't in their right mind when they're, when they're doing hard drugs like that. And, and so it, it doesn't take much. I mean, you're seeing the home invasion stuff going on in Houston quite a bit. We've had a couple of shootings on my road. I live on a dead end road. Um, we've, we, you know, it, 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 like, well, just get out, just get out of the city. Well, yeah, that, that's our plan, but you have to be, you have to be aware. You have to watch, you know, and, and, and for some carrying, carrying a tool is, is kind of like a wool bee. You know, a, a blanket, you know, something that makes you feel better, but always being prepared. So I encourage you, if you want to carry in the truck, get your local permit and know your local laws and know the laws and know your policies of your company. We don't have a company policy um, about carrying in our trucks. In fact, it's it's actually encouraged with, with, with our contractors. And... You know, and, and the other thing that I want to I want to put out there is that number one, I'm not a violent person, nor do I want to have violence in anybody. I don't put myself in situations where I think I need something. I try to sleep in safe places when I'm out in the truck. I don't go anywhere that I wouldn't go without a tool. Um, I'm not 
you know, I'm not all paranoid, you know, I'm not all afraid, you know. There's nothing wrong with being prepared. There's nothing wrong with being prepared. You know, we've seen time and time again of perfect examples of people fighting off home invaders or people not getting robbed because they had a tool on them or being able to protect themselves. Hell, there was one guy that, a concealed carry guy that was able to help a police officer by shooting the person that was on top of the police officer beating them up. You know, that there's, there's, there's perfect examples, you know, and, and one has to wonder what created the mindset that, that you're going to be called paranoid, that you're going to be called crazy, you know, that, that it's wrong to believe in the second amendment, you know, or that you're a violent right winger that that's ready to, to kill the left. If, if you're carrying, you know, a tool on you. And, you know, and, and, and we as truck drivers can be easy targets, you know, um, you know, and, and if inflation keeps going up, if things keep getting harder and harder to find, we're definitely going to be targets, right? So you have to learn to find a way to, to protect yourself, right? And, you know, and there's different ways you can know Jiu-Jitsu or karate, or you can, you know, uh, maybe, you know, have a tire thumper nearby or, you know, a can of mace or um, wasp spray. I've heard people using wasp spray, you know, they keep it by the, by the truck, you know. Um, I mean, there's different ways to promote safety, be, be situation aware. But, you know, but here's the thing. So when I first got into this world, um, there was always that thought in the back of my mind. Am I being paranoid? Am I, am I being afraid? Am I being fearful? You know, um, you know, imagine a guy that looks like this, you know, being fearful and, you know, am I being crazy? Am I being crazy? You know, um, you know, am I just reading too much? Am I expecting society's collapse any moment? Am I being, am I being paranoid? You know, am I being, afraid and, and I don't live my life in fear. I'm not being paranoid. I'm a realist, right? I realize that people can do horrible things. And if you go to other countries, I mean, they, they deal with a lot more than what we deal with, right? You know, go to Brazil. I mean, there's a lot of videos on active self protections YouTube channel that, that come out of Brazil of off duty cops protecting people and, and, and thwarting robberies and you know, and, and that stuff's becoming, you know, you can look at any statistic, um, like Washington, Washington, D.C., you know, where guns are illegal, homicides are up, you know, in almost every city, homicides are up. And um, St. Louis is one of the worst, you know, we're not far from St. Louis, you know, we're about 200 miles, but still, it's, 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 it's one of our representing cities. And, you know, and every now and then I watch a video or I hear about a news program um, where, you know, I'm not being paranoid. You have to, you have to protect yourself. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good people in this world, but there's also a lot of bad, you know, they want your money, they want your car, they want you, they want to judge you for what you have, what you do. And, you know, and, you know, the country has been divided I mean, I mean, I think we were pretty well divided in the sixties as well, but you know, it's on a different level now. And so if you're thinking about carrying as a truck driver, know your laws, know your state laws, get your concealed carry permit. And, uh, you know, educate yourself, but the app is called CCW. Um, it's a, one that Carrie Trainer on YouTube endorses. Um, it, it, it's great at telling you that, you know, where, where you're permitted, where you're not permitted, whether it's a shall issue, issue state or whether you have to notify the police when you get pulled over. Um, now, carrying the truck does have its issues other than the law. You know, you can't go into prisons, deliveries with a firearm. You can't go on military bases. Um, you know, delivery. My truck has been searched one time. I delivered, um, 
at a at an ammo plant in Independence, Missouri, where you have to let someone in your truck, they do a search, and you have to take your laptop out and whatever weapons you have, whether it be knives or, or firearms or whatever, and they lock them in a locker and they do a background check on you while you wait. Um, so it takes about an hour to get just even in the door. Um, and that one time I picked up used tires from Fort Leonard Wood. Um, I wasn't carrying at that time and I wasn't carrying at the other time too. Um, but you know, for the most part, um, just know your laws, know what you're getting. It takes a big responsibility, you know, and, 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 and you, you can't let anger, you know, you can't get mad at someone on the fuel Island and get in a shootout. You can't do anything like that, you know, but I think people would be surprised just of, of how many drivers are carrying. They, they just don't announce it. Um, so as a truck driver, I encourage it um, because things are getting kind of weird out here, you know, at times, um, you know, especially when, when all the riots and protests were happening, you know, and, and now, you know, diesel uh, thefts are on the rise. People are stealing equipment. You know, there's a lot of people losing trailers due to thefts because of the price of equipment. Um, you know, there's there's a lot there's a lot of things going on now. Have have they always been like that? Well, if you read the old old guys, old truckers Facebook page, we've always had issues. We have always had issues with crimes. There are neighborhoods back in the day in New Orleans that you wouldn't have survived over the night, but you can kind of hang out now, you know? But I do know that drug use is up, depression is up, mental illness is up, and, um, you know? And those are the kind of things that make people do stupid things. So, anyways, um, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I'm trying to do more members only posts for a minute, but don't fret. We'll put this on the regular stuff here after a while. And um, I want everybody to be safe, be aware. And uh, you know, and I've got a new slogan, strength for today, hope for tomorrow. Peace.